स्मार्ट ट्वेंटी फोर ड्राइविंग बिजनेस back in our talk show the point and we assure you that smart 24 tv we teach we inform we analyze issues intending to develop this country and today our point we are looking at the registration and our topic of discussion remains does the call for constitutional review solve uganda's economic and political challenges uganda has passed through a lot those who read about uganda uganda 1980 as uh, 62 up to where we are it's a long story we had the economic crisis during the days of amin when we are talking about business we cannot fail to talk about the politics and in our points to, once again we were continuing with the discussion uh, uh, especially with the pre- receiving the presentation submission of one of our dennis on ekalit ameri and we were looking at uh, why is it that some countries much as Uganda we have a challenge of from time to time a number of 65 articles which have been amended and more others are about to be amended as honorable was you know tipping us the right code as saying seeing far but some countries which have not concentrated much more on politicking registration we talk about registration then we talk about the challenge we had at that time during the days of covid it was it was found out i was on the analytical a uh, platform under the leader opposition office that we didn't have a law that would have ushered us either to go for election in a ta- times of pandemic it talks about other occurrences not covid pandemic wasn't there and uh, as a result as a result when you talk about the when there is a state of emergency in terms of war the the constitution doesn't bring out the uh, other cases including the pandemic especially the pandemic of like covid and we had to 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 struggle around and move forward so what i'm trying to bring as an enlightenment the viewers there are a number of gaps that are existing they can affect our economy they can affect the politics the other day honorable you remember it was declared that business could not continue at all after the death of our our beloved our beloved director and our speaker jacob bolanya may his soul rest in turn in turn peace and it was also a serious it's a serious challenge because that means without the amendment of the constitution business could not go on whether maybe it is to save another soul by passing uh, maybe some funding by either to construct a hospital that could not happen so that means our constitution where we are the point of view we are discussing it is very much more pertinent back to the point why is it that in china which is a fast growing economy they don't have political scrabbles here and there whether you know to be discontented whether so and so is ruling or so and so is ruling what they are all about is production is making money they are in the cash economy they are coming here they are only doing business why is it that uganda is not adopting the same line much as of course we are not interested to have one person oh. ruling till death chain is authoritative Let, let's go back to when I you come you come over <laughs> after five minutes you receive here and you give us your point yeah, yeah, thank you very much in fact uh, the example you are giving on china china respect the rules of law china respects the constitution china the leadership of china actually love their country maybe more than ours uh, that is why it is completely parallel in the understanding of uh, the rules of law in respect of human rights in uh, protection china of human rights <laughs> let, let me has a justification on it but you will, you will tell us the part of your story yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so basically uh, for this country to enter into the calls for constitutional amendment to check the challenges the political challenges in this country and to check on the economic crisis in this country is good only when there is good will the way i've stated before mm-hmm. i want to say that there are certain section in this country in the constitution that need to be really reviewed when you look at the power of the president to appoint the judiciary the judiciary when you look at the power of the president to appoint the electoral commission it has made the election of uganda just a ritual it is a ritual that people goes in for it knowing the outcome already because he who appoints has power on who should be declared a winner mm-hmm. so so there a lot of review in our constitution that need to be done mm-hmm. to at least create a political safe environment and economic safe environment in this country when you look at uh, 
also in economic perspective. Look at uh, the free market economy in this mm. country. Yes, How the prices are rising up. Mm. How sellers set their own prices depending on the demands within the society. Mm. Look at uh, the privatization that happened in this country. Mm. Between 1991, actually 1990, 1991, 1993, even up to now privatization is still going on. Mm. How most of the government properties have been privatized. Now, if there is a way we can put a law that can bring back some of the things, for example, like the, 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 the cooperative union, that used to help the local people a lot. Mm -hmm. For example, if we can put a law that can actually reinforce the Mafuta Mingi Declaration of 2005, where the heads of states, the, the African Union, sat in Tanzania and they agreed that any country in Africa must put at least 10% of the entire budget, 10% mm. of the budget, into agriculture. And in Uganda, if that would be really revisited and put as a law, that would be very good. That yes. would help because Uganda mm. is a country that strives actually on agriculture. 70% of the local people in Uganda, actually, they are agriculturalists. Mm -hmm. Uganda gives to the GDP about 37%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uganda contribute a lot, I mean, I mean, agriculture, agriculture gives to the GDP of this country 37%, mm -hmm. the, the, the production, uh, uh, the growth. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so things like agriculture, if it can be reviewed and put uh, some stringent on in the constitution that such a budget of 10% must be given agriculture. Must you make a, a constitutional provision for that really? Yeah, I think it is necessary. Of course, to reinforce the, that. yes, that is where they are talking about the economic rights. The economic rights, and maybe in the Act of Parliament, under the Act of Parliament, as you, I will wait for a private member bill uh, mm, concerning yeah. the restoration. Exactly. We talked about restoration of uh, cooperatives. Then also mm. there is the prioritizing because the Public Management Finance Act, because still, as uh, my brother was bring, pointing out an, an, an issue, uh, the, the, the enactment of the, of the laws is still mandated by the Supreme Law because the Parliament says yes. make enactment. So still, the authority comes from the, the Constitution. Exactly. Yes, so now in that way, if like uh, some of the ruling countries like used to have the NADS Act, I don't know, NADS Act of Parliament, <laughs> whether it is still at all powerful to regulate the enactment of uh, or adoption of the Maputo Declaration. And that's what a bit he was see, reflecting on. What we are talking about, what my mm -hmm. one of my colleagues saying here. Yes. These are the details. Yes. These are the details that are so, in that are sorted bills. out mm -hmm. within a appropriation bill. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where you are appropriating the budget, yes. the resources. Mm -hmm. So those are the those details are sorted out within the appropriation okay. act, th th which you which Parliament passes every every year. Mm -hmm. The issues of this agriculture, how much percentage, how much, these are issues of policy. Mm -hmm. So you cannot lift matters of the policy into the constitution. The constitution is a broad... Uh, I'm, I'm just looking uh, at how best it can be tied. All right. To make the, it... All uh, right. Yeah. The constitution is broad. Mm -hmm. It makes there shall be governance that we you know. The constitution gives you a broader perspective mm -hmm. on how there should be governance. Like the way you put there and shall then, be... And then and you make acts, budget. you make acts that will operationalize the articles within the constitution. Mm. Now the articles goes into details and the policies go into micro details. Mm. So the issue, this thing they were talking about, well, but I agree, of course, there are uh, provisions within the constitution that have to be entrenched that have to be protected but when we went going into the management the details operationalization mm. of ushering the you economic know, development and growth okay. thank, thank you for you not need you don't need to touch the constitution information received honorable and you don't mm. yeah, okay information received right it was good information but there is emphasis i i, I mean uh, also enlightenment on to bring in as the honorable continues so, uh, in understanding of what you are stating, some countries have deliberately, deliberately taken it over that for us, we are industrial country. And as you've said, either through the enactment of their laws, 
as you talked about appropriation or whether by constitution, according to their legislation policy, they say this is what we stand for. America, we stand for this. China, we are for this. Our resources will go to this. Our resources will not go for creation of another district. And I think in the process right. of uh, uh, determining which law, enabling law, and even maybe backed up by whatever way of the legal framework is important. We can go on. Yeah, I we, was, have, uh, we have two minutes and then we go to another day. Yeah, yeah, true. I was uh, giving you some of the highlights, some of the sectors mm. that actually need to be touched so that uh, it is respected, fully respected and adhered to. Mm. Uh, the last uh, example I also would, would like to give is uh, uh, it is this on the area of uh, the, the appointment. Mm -hmm. So you, you see, like like, like the, the, the the electoral commission chair passion, mm -hmm. all this kind of thing. If there is good will, if there is a particular section that can be put, some clause that can be put mm -hmm. to capture and to give independency mm -hmm. in appointment of electoral chairman, electoral commission, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. That would help a lot. So generally, what, I, what I'm trying to say is, uh, the calls for the constitutional amendment is good. Mm -hmm. It is good, mm -hmm. provided there is good will, mm -hmm. provided we are going to look at exactly what touch the citizens of this country, but not what touch individual, the president, or what will really protect the world have a match. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what I want to do. Thank you so much, Honorable Dennis and Ekaita Ahmed. You are our uh, MP and uh, of Guru, I mean of uh, Kitugu Municipality. Ugandans, the young generation and the old, they are having expectation a lot from you. And this is the time to show the name. And uh, I will, very soon, I, please, we, we are ready to be receiving even some private member bills. Of which passionately you are really talking yeah, about yeah, so, so that they can be presented and we put things in order. Honorable yeah, Vanya Zach Henry, yes. I'm very much concerned on this constitution too as a public management scientist mm -hmm. looking at where we have come from and where we are. Some, you were talking about a point on which I want to give emphasis and you'll come on. Some of the countries that put on what we call a seal, if, if you're talking about having a, a regulated appointment of ministers and the MPs, creation of consequence and so forth. Mm. There's a time when the parliament was about to suggest that there should be, you call it a moratorium, right? right? Yeah. Mm. Yes, oh, yeah. of we, which, which we say, between this time and this time, we have decided for purposes of saving funds for, mm. public, uh, uh, you, you, for public use and allocation of resources, mm. not create more other districts. But this seems to be delaying. Uh, some mm, sub, sub counties mm. are turning even to be consequences. And when it is created as a consequence, because that's again the constitution, sir. Mm. And the, the, as you one time I, I applaud you, you stated that when you see another member of parliament imagine another sub county, that is the whole hospital moving. You, you made that statement. Mm. It was a good one. But when are we going to mean business and becomes business? Our resources are just, you know, being dumped into that kind of creation of administrative units, spending much more on public, uh, you know, um, uh, expenditure. You look at uh, countries like uh, Nigeria, you look at uh, here, Kenya, you look at other countries like Tanzania. Why do, should we have a huge cabinet? Why should we have a huge, huge, uh, you know, size of parliament? Even we have had this one. We may end up, even maybe I don't know whether you will now always, you know, make it in the shifts. We need to do something. <laughs> Come on, sir, you are welcome once again. Of course, what you are saying, there is a very good point to that. Why should Uganda have the biggest parliament in Africa? Mm -hmm. Why should we, a small and population of 45 million people start competing with the size of uh, members of parliament with China, which has one billion plus population? So we need to have administrative units that are manageable. Because the way we have created the administrative units, there have come so many that the administration costs override the production investments. So instead of building uh, hospitals, instead of building schools, we are, we are suffocating building schools, building hospitals, building roads, investing in agriculture, we suffocate those production sectors 
to finance the administrative sector, to finance paying members of parliament, to finance a big cabinet, to finance huge many districts, mm. chairpersons, Manyawat, RDCs, whatever it goes is. So we need to suffocate these administrative expenses, costs. And to do that, as Kone was saying, you need to be, have a good, a firm, a firm hand of political, which is not uh, populist, which is not driving populism. Sure. Like what we are talking about China. China is not about populism. Uh -huh. China is not about the democracy in China. They are strict. It is either this or this. These are happening in some of the countries here in, in Africa too. Tanzania is more or less the same. And uh, Rwanda, that is uh, a given. So you need to have a firm hand of democracy. Not to say, like how you see the other day we are uh, discussing about the uh, public transport system. Mm -hmm. You allow Dick and Tom and Harry to bring a border border in this city and the whole city is swamped by border borders without being trained, without doing anything. But because you want a huge number of young people you have pro failed to provide for employment and you are sharing them into disguised employment through Boda Boda. Rules, the laws are there not to please the population. Rules are there to put a stop, stop you from doing what, you, what is wrong. Rules are not there so that they put their law to please the people. And they say, okay, you can drink uh, anything, this alcohol which is not regulated. You, we don't need to regulate this like uh, coffee sector. We get a lot of money. You don't need the road to regulate coffee. Let people harvest anyhow. Let people handle whatever they want to handle anyhow. Rules are there to regulate, to put, stop, so that you don't exceed. So what we are talking about in this issue is very, very, very important. Mm. The constitution that will give investors confidence. Mm -hmm. The constitution that will promote good governance. Mm -hmm. The constitution that will separate the arms of the state. Mm -hmm. The constitution that will not make judiciary merge with parliament and merge with the executive. The executive overriding parliament. The executive riding judges. There should be separation of power. So once you have those, those kind of separation of power, parliament will check the executive. Judiciary will make sure that the rules are implemented. So the, and you, there, is this, uh, there is where you get justice, we dispense justice. But if you are going to have a judiciary whose judgment will be written by a member from the executive, then you will have chaos. In one minute, what's your last word to the viewers? So my last word to the viewers is that yes. uh, the parliament must have the muscle, must stand on its feet to do they its have job. The muscle. Because if the parliament doesn't good, they make the good rules. Mm -hmm. If the parliament doesn't check the executive, mm -hmm. if the parliament doesn't check all the organs within the state, and the parliament is just there to watch, and you have a parliament which is rubber stamping whatever comes, and if you have a parliament that is going to to, to sell the budget. If you have a parliament which is uh, corrupted, then you know that you are going for chaos. Then you go that whatever rules you are going to make, then you can go in parliament and buy a row that will to your own wish. You can go to parliament and tamper with the constitution and pay money and they temper constitution to serve your selfish motives. Awesome. So we must have a parliament which is strong. We must have a parliament And we which must is have strong. an executive. Yes. We should have an executive which is conscious of the which is conscious, which is patriotic, which is nationalistic, and which we have even a, where we have a cabinet that advises the president and where they will have a discussion with the president. Not to have a cabinet which is also that which is also lame and dark. Thank we you must have that. serious, strong institutions. Yes. Built and embedded in the institutional governance. Now they are not there. We have to accept they are not I there. I must say the institutions they have been weakened. They have been weakened. The institutionalism in, weak the, in the country, the institutions are weak. Parliament could be weak. Parliament is weak. Cabinet is weak. Judiciary is weak. So it's a crisis. 
And when you have that kind of crisis, you end up having an underground mafia group governing the country. Honorable Manyazachi, you receive us in this if God allows you, but we need a lot to do. I accept. Thank you. That was a serious point as you are, you know, the dear viewers are following and we are looking at who should be our Mizea. But all Ugandans, you are the Mizeas in this matter, this is your country. Honorable Amiri, here is our, your last word. <laughs> and as we look yeah. at, you, at your last word, uh, Honorable Banyaza took the point and uh, in analysis we felt that Parliament and a member of Parliament was found out in the, the previous national development plan and they had agreed in order to strengthen the institution that the member of parliament should not double as a minister. A lot is desirable for amendments because one of the reasons why there's no check and balance, a minister, you cannot be a minister and a member of parliament and then you check yourself. We are in a dilemma. It's a crisis. And there are eight of them. Yes, honorable, I, I will never marry. Now another issue at hand. Have you set up a constitutional commission review so that we can come out from this uh, challenging situation, the political and the economic challenging situation. You can tell us and give us your last word in one or two minutes. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I want to conclude by saying that uh, the constitutional review, yes, it is good, but the most important thing that personally I would see it is quite clear and um, if we addressed, we'll settle the political crisis, will say to the economic crisis in this country, and that is President Museveni himself. If Museveni can accept to leave the three arms of government, to, to perform their duties independently without interference, mm -hmm. to leave parliament to do their work, their legislation work, without interference, without interference of game of number, without interference of the influence of the caucus, to derail and block a lot of progress in parliament, mm -hmm. to leave the judiciary system to operate independent and independently, to leave also the executives, the ministers only offices, to have authority to decide within their sectors and dockets, to do certain kind of activities authoritatively, mm -hmm. not just being a rubber stamp. Let me tell you, some of these ministers in the executive they don't have the power. They are just there to fill space, to fill the position. Mm -hmm. Any decision they want to make, they run to the president. Mm -hmm. So to me, I see the biggest problem we have in this country is the patronage uh, challenge. It is the problem of longevity that the president is doing all he detects to keep himself in power by controlling all the sectors that makes a country run. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Issues of corruption will continue at the moment that, like I said last time, that there is a clique of mafias in this country that has gathered themselves and have formed themselves into a, into a clan of corrupt officials, mm -hmm. ready to steal anything mm -hmm. uh, on a boat. So for all these kind call of that things... that a Kabul. <laughs> or yes. Katel. Yes. Yes. Hey, <laughs> yes, yes. For all this kind of uh, political insecurity, the economic crisis, the inhuman act, the human rights violation, the, the rituals election, which is actually not the real democracy. Eh? The president need to accept to retire. The president need to at least leave power to another person because he is the only problem. I want to be very, very clear on my point that if he decides to hand over power to another person, I believe changes will be there. Changes but at the moment, there. It is going to be very hard to let the same person who has created the mess preside over uh, the system of the country to create changes. It's very hard. It's going to be very, very hard. Thank you, Honorable Dennis. The three Dennis. of government need to operate independently. Thank you, Honorable Dennis Ameri. And dear viewers, these were our guests, and we appreciate to have given us your <coughs> package. But it is some part of it is a food for thought, because it may not be easily taken by some who are enjoying it in a better way. And again, Honorable Banyazachi, thank you for your submission, your challenging statements, <coughs> which are intending also to contribute to the development of this country. You articulated very Honorable Dennis about how, indeed, if we don't set out the legislative and constitutional 
challenges that require review, how our economy will remain staggering. We have a lot to learn from other countries, a lot from Kenya, a lot from uh, South Africa, a lot from Nigeria. These are countries which are ahead of us in terms of economic growth. Our topic of discussion tonight was not intending to make any kind of political statement, but yet it was deliberate to analyze issues of economy and, and, and politics and to look at how we can make our country better, not better. We hope that we can have a better country to live in that will not remain in a cycle. We can advance. That is our hope that we are living to all of us as viewers. But there must be a deliberate effort by all citizens, responsiveness, to ensure that we can achieve these targets from time to time. Once again, I want to appreciate dear viewers to be with us on Smart24 TV. And I remain Dr. Joseph Tindeba, wishing you and all Ugandans the best of our times. Good night.